we're joining Dr. Brian Kahn, who's running a sweet corn variety trial. Brian, can you please tell me a bit about the experiment you're running here? Sure. Well, we've got a number of different sweet corns out here, 25 different varieties in all. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of got the trial divided up into two different sections, um, according to the sweetness and the genetic systems for sweetness. And what are uh, the sweetness in corn is operated? There's two different genes that affect that sweetness flavor. How do these work? Right, there's a number of different genes and they fall into two major categories. One of them is called SH2 or shrunken 2, which is what most people think of when they think of super sweet corn. Mm -hmm. The other one's called SE or sugary enhanced. Within those two groups, there's a number of different genetic systems. But as long as you stay within the two main groups, you can grow those similar corns near each other without any problem. And if they cross pollinate, what happens? Oh, if they cross pollinate, you can get into trouble because the flavor will change from a sweetness enhanced corn to something that tastes just like field corn or even worse, bland, starchy, no good at all. And that's because uh, corn's very interesting because the pollen has an immediate effect on the flavor of the harvested ear, is that right? That's right. It's, uh, it's a rather unique situation. It's called the Xenia effect, which is X-E-N-I-A, and it's the immediate effect of the pollen from a cross-pollination on the endosperm, which is a part of the seed that we eat. And basically what that means is, if you have, for instance, a yellow corn and a white corn, and they happen to cross with each other, if the white corn receives yellow pollen, it's gonna end up with some bicolor kernels. And what's unique about that is you see it right away, immediately. You don't have to wait for the next generation. It's right there. Yeah, whereas cross-pollination in a tomato, for example, we'd see that uh, the effect of that cross-pollination when we grow the seed out, but here we're eating that seed and we're getting those uh, flavor effects and other effects immediately. Exactly, exactly. Well, I suppose this presents a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to trial a variety of cultivars in a limited space. Normally you want to separate these quite a distance. Right. We have some information on our sweet corn extension fact sheet that talks about ways to isolate corn. Mm -hmm. What we've done here at the station is, as I said, we've got these two different groups. Here we're standing in an SH2 trial. Mm -hmm. All of the corns in this block have that SH2 genetic system. They can cross with each other. And then over there on the other side of this big aisle, we've got the SE group and it's planted, and you can feel it in our face right now, it's planted so that the prevailing winds from the south will push the corn pollen toward the north not that way so that the two groups stay isolated and they don't cross. And this is something people in the home garden can use if they want to grow two different varieties of corn. Sure, consider the, to the wind. Sure, consider the direction of the prevailing wind. Another thing that you can do is to isolate by uh, time of maturity or planting time. Ideally, you want your corns to mature about two weeks apart. You okay. can cut it a little bit closer, but if you want perfect control, you want to have about two weeks. And that brings up another interesting fact about corn. Here in Oklahoma, our longer maturing corns tend to perform better. Why is that? Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, in our trial here, the minimum estimated days to maturity is 72. We don't grow any corns that are like 67, 68 days. And that's because if you were to plant one of those in our spring conditions, it would start to grow and it would tassel out and silk at maybe about three feet high. Mm -hmm. And the plant is genetically programmed because of the temperature and the day length to begin flowering and fruiting like that early on. And it's too early for our conditions. It wants to try to make corn before there's enough plant there to support it. So most of our corns, the best yield usually comes somewhere in the upper 70s to about maybe 80, 82 days maturity. Okay, well thank you so much for sharing all this information about sweet corn with us. Thank you, it's a lot of fun.